With Poké Crystal Disassembly, getting into Gen 2 ROM hacks has never been easier. Simple changes are ready to be made. Swapping out values to update learn sets, stats, team compositions, a physical special split, and even adding a fairy type. This is commonly seen in complete crystal version hacks, which strip away former limitations like version exclusives for a self-contained, single-player experience. Now, Gens 1 and 2 are a bit notorious for their lack of balance, especially with skewed type distributions. My goal here today is to fix these types by filling in underpopulated ones, removing redundancies, backporting future changes, and breathing new life into otherwise overlooked Pokemon. Under the assumption that you won't have access to the entire present catalog of monsters, I, Substitute, will offer type edit suggestions specifically for crystal hacks. Type by type, we begin with those most in need. The Ghost Type It was almost silly to call Ghost its own type when only 4 made up its population. 4 out of 251 across two entire regions and generations. For those counting at home, that's Gasly's line and mischievous. Imagine being the first ghost type gym leader, only to lack the options to fill out a proper team. We're gonna rectify that. Firstly, with Marowak as Ghost Ground. It's conceptualized around parental death, appears in Lavender Tower as a literal ghost, learns Parish Song as an egg move, has a ghost type relative in Alola, and is owned by the aforementioned gym leader, Morty, in both the VS trading card set and his Stadium 2 team. It is for the latter reason that Noctowl is also my ghost flying choice. Why? With so many normal flyings flocking around Johto and Kanto, Noctowl struggles to find its own niche. Hoodoo can remain normal flying for early game balance, but Noctowl? It needs that change desperately. Why not Psychic Flying, you may ask? Ahem. Occupado. By Natu, Zatu, and Lugia, which were introduced in the exact same generation. As fellow beasts of superstition and the supernatural, Ninetales is next as Fire Ghost, in keeping with its Kitsune origin. I've had the honor of experiencing this change in Flawless Platinum, and let me tell you, it's a welcome combination compared to its original plain Fire Typing or the expected Fire Psychic which I've reserved for a different Pokemon. Again, this is under the assumption that mons without ties to Kanto and Johto like Chandelure and Skeledurge won't make an appearance in their Gen 2 centric hack. Marowak is not alone with ghostly relatives, as Corsola is a candidate for Water Ghost, or even Rock Ghost if so inclined. It's a rather flimsy suggestion, as Corsola doesn't visually match ghost types at all, unlike its Galarian form. Not to worry, other suggestions will bring Corsola back into discussion. Lapras would be a fitting water ghost, or even ice ghost. This Loch Ness monster is, after all, an elusive phantom-like survivor of extinction, making spooky wailing noises in Union Cave. It also learns Parish Song, which despite being normal type, thematically fits well with ghosts and mortality. Did I mention Morty has one? I ought to. Water and Ice is a great typing, but Cloyster and Dugong exist as well. We'll revisit Lapras. If still freed, the water ghost slot can lastly go to Politoed for the same Paris song possession reason. There are also a few dex entries stating that its cries sound like a scary scream, though uh, pure water still suits it just fine. Another being of supernatural origin is the tree with human heads known as Jemenju. You may recognize it as Executor's line. You see it now, huh? Morty sure did. Grass Ghost. The classic grass psychic typing can be inherited by the other grass Pokemon later discussed. If not Executor, another grass ghost could be Bellossum, the change informed by Hoenn's Elite Four member Phoebe, the ghost type specialist. The ghost type as a perk also makes Bellossum neutral to poison, allowing it to hold its own against its split Evo Vile Plume. Otherwise, Grass Fairy because it gets Moonblast also. Bug Ghost can be given to Parasect. Bug Grass is still a unique combination in this generation, so consider keeping it for at least the first stage of Paris. Bug Ghost could otherwise be saved for Area Dose, if not Bug Dark. Although it touts Bug Poison quite comfortably, as do Beedrill and Venomoth, it does have Shadow Sneak and Nightshade in its modern arsenal, and is part of Morty's team in Stadium 2. This opens the door to exploring its shadowy side if you so choose. Its beta design is notably more demonic as well, looking like a jack-o'-lantern demon spider. Apom, on the other hand, can have potential as normal ghosts. Pure normal is severely overpopulated, as you'll see later on. For Apom, we need to look no further than its creepy wide-eyed sprite, which reminds me a bit of Sableye. Not only that, it has access to Shadow Ball and Spite, and in modern day, Astonish and Shadow Claw. It also evolves into Ambipom, which, if you inspect closely, the face is vaguely skeletal. If you plan on giving Mischievous a secondary type, Ghost Fairy would match his Paradox Flutter main form. Pure Ghost could then go to Unknown. Unknown inhabit their own dimension, as do many ghosts according to the dex entries. 
They are a staple of Gen 2 creepypasta content, leave cryptic messages, and generate eerie radio signals when nearby. The destiny bonding, shadow tagging, amorphous boy Wobbuffet can go go psychic. Why? Because because why not? The shadowy tail portion can be the ghost part, while the main body can preserve psychic as per usual. Alternatively, fighting ghost, as it resembles a punching bag and has counter as another fundamental move. Ghost isn't the only neglected type though. The Dragon Type Dragon shares the same issues as Ghost, with only four, Dratini's line and Kingdra, to bolster its ranks. Poor Lance and Claire, Dragon Tamers forced to spam Dragonairs, and Dragon Alternatives. The obvious choice would first be Charizard, Fire Dragon in both its appearance and Future Mega. It won't be too broken as a starter since, well, it isn't exactly a starter in the first place when it comes to Crystal version. Ho-Oh and Moltres will gladly carry the Fire Flying Torch. As another pseudo-dragon, Denryu, uh, I mean, Ampharos, could be next to match his mega type of electric dragon. Ryu means dragon in Japanese, so that takes care of that. Ampharos is also one of Claire's Pokemon in Stadium 2, as well as one of Lance's in the VS card set. Gyarados, uh, has potential, but we again run into Kingdra's domain. Unless you decide on splitting physical and special moves. That would allow Gyarados to take on the physical side of things. And, of course, it is property of both Dragon Tamers. Perhaps Horsey and Seedra can also get Dragon type to fit their species name of Dragon and their Evolution Kingdra's type, if only to bolster the numbers. Lapras again? Not as Water Dragon, thankfully, but as Ice Dragon. Clara once more is an influence with her stadium team. Grass Dragon, or Grass Fairy, worked for Meganium. It doesn't have a lot going for it as a bulky defensive mon, but with a pure Grass type, Dragon could help differentiate it. Fairy type, on the other hand, well, I mean, just look at it. It's former pre-evolution too. As one of Lance's, Aerodactyl could feasibly be Rock Dragon, but Rock Flying is still a unique type in this generation. Controversially, I'd throw in Rhydon as a contender. There has to be some explanation as how Rhydon gains so many elemental moves and survive its own use of Surf despite having a four times weakness to water. Since its primary type is actually Ground, Ground Dragon could work as well in this context. Either combo would make it neutral to Surf. Rhyhorn, Onyx, Larvitar, and Geodude's line could hold down the Rock Ground tradition I guess. Claire, that's enough of that. If neither Aerodactyl or Rhydon get the Rock Dragon slot, the only other suggestion would be Onyx, which can be interpreted as an Earth Worm. That's Worm with a Y, pun intended. Steelix could then be Steel Dragon, allowing a different Groundling to inherit its former type. Another Serpent I'd throw in would be Normal Dragon Dunsparce, and a Dunsparce if you want. We can at least acknowledge that the two are the only non-dragons to learn Dragon Rush by level up, and that Normal Dragon is still a sparsely populated type. Whatever you choose, that leaves us one less pure normal to worry about. Lastly, Lugia could be a few dragon combinations, though it would skew things heavily in its favor against Ho-Oh. Lugia is more wyvern than bird-like, admittedly, and also gets multi-scale later on. Flying Dragon? Keep Stab Aeroblast, but loses its Psychic Stab. Psychic Dragon? Keep Stab Psychic, but loses Stab Aeroblast. Water Dragon? Uh, occupied. Plus I'm avoiding adding any more Pokemon than necessary to the most populated type as is. I'm not completely sold either. But if you want, the option is there. The Ice Type Ice is up next. A decent chunk of Ice's types have the same water ice combo. I say decent chunk, but it's only like three? That just goes to show that there aren't many to go around to begin with. Ice generally tacks on more weaknesses than resistances as a secondary type, so water is one of the few beneficial pairings. That's why in my hack, I decided to give ice added resistance to ground and water to make it gel better as a dual type. We've potentially dealt with Lapras recently, so Cloyster and Dugong are the current remaining water ices. The only one I can justify changing is Cloyster into Ice Rock, since Icicle Spear and Rock Blast are part of its skill link set in many games. Also consider the appearance of real world oysters, with a rocky exterior and their tendency to be served on ice. Also, Delta Species card. Since my version of ice resists water and ground, Cloyster doesn't suffer too severely in defense. Ne never mind. It still gets two four times weaknesses. Ice Steel doesn't fare much better, at least both combos become neutral to ground and are relatively unique. As for Ice's newcomers, I've always viewed retro ones as frilly and elegant looking, like they fit in an ice skating show of some kind. With that aesthetic in mind, one that fits well is Goldeen in my opinion. I turn it into Ice Fairy to break up the pure water monotony. Surprisingly, pure ice is absent from Gens 1 and 2, so I'll change another pure water Suicune into pure ice. 
Water is a vital part of the concept though, so I understand if you won't make the change. But if we're talking concept, it's also known as the Aurora Pokemon. Gets Aurora Beam by level up, has as many mentions in the decks about being the North Wind Incarnate as it does anything related to water, and it's related to crystals, aka ice crystals. Next, do you know Seal and Shelter don't share the ice type of their evolutions? It's something easily overlooked, so updating them from pure water type to part ice is the next logical step. Looks like we're done here for now. Onwards to the next type. The Fairy Type! As the latest type introduced, X and Y thankfully does some of the work for us by retroactively converting a good number of bland normal types into Fairy. Clefairy's line, Jigglypuffs, Snubbles, and Togepies. Several other monotypes latch onto the Fairy wave. Azumarill from Pure Water to Water Fairy, Mr. Mime from Psychic to Psychic Fairy. As you can see, a soft, round, playful theme is common. We've already made Goldeen and Sea King Ice Fairy, as well as Mischievous, Bellossom, and Ormaganium. It'd be neglectful of me not to mention the best Grass Fairy candidate of all, Celebi, who resembles a fairy Tinkerbell from Peter Pan. Meganium and Bellossom could have any other freed up grass combo we've mentioned before. Grass Dragon, Grass Psychic, your choice. Water Fairy would suit Corsula better than Ghost or Rock, since many of its dex entries mention a vulnerability to poison, which both Rock and Ghost already resist. For reasons we'll go into later, Water Fairy can also be given to Starmie to free up the potential Water Psychic slot. New to the discussion is Butterfree. Bug flying doesn't do him any favors, given its lackluster move pool and stats. The presence of physical attacker Scyther and special attacker Yanmega compels me to give Butters his own type altogether, helping it remain unique late game. It will definitely be more useful versus the Dragon Champ. Its quadruple weakness to rock won't be missed either. Ponyta and Rapidash are my next fairy additions. Taking cues from their Galarian relatives, we knock off another two of the many mono fire types in favor of Fire Fairy. Add a signature fairy move like Feudal Horn, and ye be setteth to joust merrily. We meet Dunsparce's Lion again as Fairy Ground. Ground because of its signature drill, and use of Earthquake as coverage. Fairy because of Serene Grace, its little wings, and because it's just so darn cute. A wild choice would be Hypno. No particular reason other than it learns Draining Kiss and Dazzling Gleam. It's not very cute at all, is it? Not to worry. There's still quite a few pinky cute Pokemon to choose from, all fitting the fairy framework. Mew with the signature pink bubble could also be Psychic Fairy if you want. Either Miltank or the Chansey line could change to pure or normal fairy. Though I'm okay with the current amount of converts we have from the normal type. Lastly, Snubble and Granbull can be updated to fit fairy fighting, which bolster Granbull's already great move pool of fighting moves, crunch, play rough, and earthquake. Fighting type gym leader Chuck also owns Granbull in the VS set, as well as Stadium 2, as does Bruno, to support this change. With a crunch prone behavior, Dark would also be a suitable secondary type. Speaking of which. The Dark Type! As a younger type, Dark is surprisingly diverse in his introductory generation. On paper, that is. Once again, it falls short of being able to break double digits. All, except Umbreon are inaccessible before beating the league, and even then, the Elite Four member everyone loves to quote is forced to use Vileplume and Gengar as non-dark fillers. We've gone over a few already, but we'll start fresh with Grass Dark. If you want to keep Vileplume on Karen's team, its poison type can be swapped out for Dark, although Vileplume and Venusaur share a concept connection, so I think it's fitting that they keep the same shared type of Grass Poison. In its place, Victory Bell is my personal suggestion, due to its placement on Karen's stadium team and its depiction as quite the biter. Same with the previously mentioned Snubble line. Same with Feraligator's line, which always seem well equipped for stab, bite, and crunch attacks. They have been associated with Dark in the past. The Dark Eyeliner helps sell this illusion. Ariados was brought up earlier as the main bug Dark. It's given Dark type in different trading card sets, so you can use that as circumstantial evidence. If not, Pinsir will do fine. For Raticate, Persian, Electrode, and or Arbuck, I'd strongly consider Dark type, due to their extensive association with the villainous Team Rocket. They've already been given Dark types in the EX Team Rocket Returns set, with Arbuck having another in Champion's Path, and Persian in the Hall on Phantoms. Raticate and Persian also have Dark relatives in Alola, Persian and Electrode are part of Cairn Stadium Rematch Team, and Electrode additionally has a tendency to cause blackouts, use foul play, and have a devious look and expression on at all times. If not Arbon, Rhymer's Line would be perfect for Poison Dark, if you want to link them to their Alolan counterparts. Not to mention they have a whole lot of Dark type representation in the cards. I do, however, have other plans for these guys too, for another type. Diglett and Ducktrio are odd ones that I'll throw in. They live in tunnels, 
You had Sucker Punch, Memento, Night Slash, and Foul Play in later generations, and in many depictions, the trio, all three heads, typically frowned. Anger is also why I'd give Mankey and Primate Dark type. Even Annihilate fits this type too at first glance. If only Ghost Fighting weren't such a cool type. Prior to Gen 9, Primate had a much larger pool of dark moves, and a practically zero ghost aside from curse. It's only in Gen 9 that moves like Rage Fist and Shadow Claw were made available to it. Dark fighting also breaks up the mono fighting monotony. Alternatively, Hitmonlee can try dark fighting, under the condition that we give the other Hitmon secondary types too. It's the eyeliner for me. Lastly, Girafferic as Psychic Dark. A legally distinct chain chomp acts as his darker half, and it's the reason Crunch is learnable as a level up move. It also had a secondary dark type in the beta as normal dark, so that settles it in my mind. I'll transfer the old psychic normal typing to another familiar Johto Quadruped. Moving on. The Steel Type. Steel got off to a great start, with some of the coolest ones seen to date, just with a low amount of distinct evolutionary families. We previously toyed with Cloyster being Ice Steel, though I assume Ice Rock going forward. Depending on what you've done with Steelix, which could be kept as Steel Ground, made Steel Dragon, or potentially be made pure steel with Onyx being pure rock. His old type can then be inherited by Sand Slash, who itself has a steel relative, learns Gyro Ball by level up in later gens, and is this exact combination in the Delta variant. I'd also suggest Blastoise. Remember, Empoleon doesn't exist yet, and there are plenty of pure waters to take this turtle's place. His cannons look metallic enough, and it's the only non-steel to learn Flash Cannon by level up. It was also part of Jasmine, the steel type gym leader's stadium team. Blastoise also deserves some kind of secondary stab, which Venusaur and Charizard already benefited from. Kingler can have Water Steel if you want to leave Blastoise alone. It learns Metal Claw by level up in later gens. If not, we'll see Kingler again soon. Quillfish is a flimsier suggestion. If not Water Steel, then Poison Steel? It resembles explosive naval mines, which are made of steel. Plus, it's a unique type for this gen, given that Tentacruel already excels as Water Poison. Alakazam as Psyche Steel because... Uh, spoons? <laughs> It might appreciate neutrality to bugs. Plus, since steel is resistant to the psychic, the added type can explain why Alakazam bends metal spoons so easily. There aren't many pure steel types available, so consider having something like Tauros as pure steel, if not Steelix. I'd like to draw attention to its rivet looking dots on its head and the shiny grayish horns. Also, its proximity to the first steel gym. Maybe it's not the best idea to take away one of the best normal type attackers in the early gens. Steel normal could work. Fighting steel would be even better though. With fighting type mirroring its pal Day and cousin, and complementing its ownership by Chuck in the VS trading card set. Finally, if we're going with the Hitmon instead, perhaps give Hitmonchan the fighting steel type combination. You can make better use of Bullet Punch as a move, and Iron Fist as an ability if you want to include abilities. A bit of a stretch, no Hitmon pun intended, but this allows us to segue into fighting as a type. The fighting type! Once again, purity is the issue, even more so when this type barely breaks double digits. There are simply too many mono fighting types, with so few others to choose from. To make things worse, the pool of fighting mons is shared between a fighting type gym leader, a karate king, and an elite 4 member. Previously discussed were Steel Fighting Tauros or Hitmonchan, Dark Fighting Mankey and Primate or Hitmonlee, which leaves us with the remaining Hitmon Hitmontop to have ground fighting. Since Hitmontop so prominently uses Dig in his first in-game appearance, ground would suit it well. It is also mentioned drilling holes in the ground by spinning so much in the dex entries. And it also gets rather interesting coverage with moves like Earthquake, Bulldoze, and Drill Run in later games. For brand new fighting types, we mentioned Granbull as Fairy Fighting. Next is Farfetch'd as Fighting Flying. This is a change you'll see often in ROM hacks. Fighting is already a type shared by its Galarian counterparts. Electabuzz's line can be Electric Fighting because of their punchy move repertoire, fighting type Delta species, and beastly forearms. I draw attention to Electivire especially. Magmar's line as counterpart can also learn many punching moves, and even Mach Punch, one of the few non-fighting mons to do so. Both families have access to other high damaging fighting moves like Brick Break, Cross Chop, Dynamic Punch, Focus Punch, Hammer Arm, Low Kick, Focus Blast, and so on. For similar reasons, Muck with its one good arm can be poison fighting. Muck has similar access to all the elemental punches and fighting moves like Drain Punch and Focus Blast. If you're okay with Heracross getting some company, Muck fighting can go to either Ledian, which has Iron Fist and punching moves, or the close combating Pinsir. I have other plans for Ledian if you decide against this. Next, Pseudo Wudo as Rock Fighting. It already made use of Low Kick and Counter as its base moves. Despite being based on a fossilized tree, 
One can argue that his body shape is also reminiscent of a punching bag, with his big hands ideal for punching back. The other punching bag, Wap Fett, was previously considered as ghost fighting. For psychic fighting, I throw in Hypno. It gets Meditate to raise attack, has good fighting moves, and plenty of punching moves. Plus its official art, posture, and proportions seem ideal for hand-to-hand -hand combat. If only its stats were better, it could make a decent Gen 2 Metacham stand-in. Ursaring could and should be normal fighting given its move pool and use of close combat. Somewhat mimicking what Beware's line does, and even Pangoro. It's also owned by Bruno in the cards, as well as Chuck in Stadium 2. We mentioned Kingler before as Water Steel, but if you don't mind giving Polyrath some competition, Water Fighting Kingler would work well. It naturally gets hammer on by level up in modern games, pairing nicely with its former signature move, Crab Hammer. Those last two additions reduce repeats of some of the most populated types, which we'll cover next. The normal type. Normal is perhaps the biggest example of early redundancy. You're either pure normal or normal flying. Nothing in between except giraffe rig. We took care of those fairy converts, so we can add more distinct ones now. For Lickitung, normal poison. Its dex entries already mentioned paralyzing tongue, plus it's owned by Season 1 Team Rocket in the anime, who had a majority poison type team. We've gone over potential new types for Dunsparce and Tauros. The pure normal Porygon, known notoriously as the Electric Soldier, can be changed to fit normal electric. The Porygon line are the only ones naturally to learn Zap Cannon in this generation too, despite not having the electric type. Keep that in mind. Apon we covered as Normal Ghost, and since we changed the Raphorig to Psychic Dark, Normal Psychic would then go to Stantler. It has a decent amount of psychic attacks and status moves, and there's also its evolution word deer to consider, which already has this combination. The next few have also been handled, converted from pure normals to darks to match Alolan regional forms. As a form of normal flying type, we converted Noctow to ghost flying, Togetic to fairy flying, and Farfi to fighting flying. That leaves us Pidgeot, Furo, and Dodrio lines. Pidgeot should keep this combination as a special attacker, while physically, uh, isn't Dodrio just Furo but better in every way? Stats and moves and all? To give Furo its own space, consider making it pure flying, a type which we don't see until gen 5, and even then only as a legendary. At the expense of its normal stab, it now resists fighting type instead of being neutral to it. Normal ground is the final combination I'd consider. Kangaskhan is the obvious and primary candidate, since it's the only non-ground type used by Giovanni in the first games, later replaced by Persian. Adding ground to it will also further connect it to Marowak, whom we changed previously to Ground Ghost, and whom Team Rocket has made a literal ghost in the first place. In present day, Ursaluna is normal ground, which could be an option for its pre-evolution Ursaring as well. Lastly, and definitely least, consider Ferd's line, whose crystal Crystal entry is vaguely mentioned burrowing. We gave many pure normals different types than secondary types, but that still leaves us with many unchanged. Honestly, I'm okay with this number. Another crowded type needs our attention. The water type! I completely understand why water is so bountiful. We needed unique encounters not only for surfing, but also for all the different rods and different routes. Otherwise, players wouldn't even bother to use these different encounter methods if all they ever run into is Magikarp and Tentacool. Those aquatic encounters should still exist, it's just we don't have to go with the predictable mono water typing anymore. We've removed many pure waters with Blastoise as Water Steel, Kingler as Water Steel or Water Fighting, Croconaw and Feraligator as Water Dark, Goldeen's line as Ice Fairy, Meryl's line as Water Fairy, and Suicune as Pure Ice. We also remedied some Water Ice redundancy with Lapras as Ice Ghost or Ice Dragon, Coyster as Ice Rock or Ice Steel, and updated Seal and Sheltered from pure water to whatever matches their evolutions. Water Flying is occupied by Mantine and Gyarados, the latter considered for physical Water Dragon. The next options are uh, all rather entangled. They make for a ripple effect if you will, and it starts with Mono Water Gold Duck. It's obviously very psychic oriented based on its move pool, documented use of telekinesis, third eye laser powers, and previous stage's name of Psyduck. Now, Water Psyche is occupied by both Starmie and Slowpoke's line. Four in total. Star U is left out, surprisingly. I can see Starmie becoming Water Fairy to make room, which is okay since Azumarill is more physically oriented. Starmie mostly uses Bolt Beam anyways, while Dazzling Gleam and Psychic have similar enough covers to be interchanged. That does, however, force us to rethink Corsola, another Water Fairy candidate, and Hypnofrog Politoed, a potential Water Psychic. Water Ghost and Rock Ghost were previous suggestions for Corsola. Other than Water Fairy, Water Grass would be the only combination to preserve its pollution vulnerable lore. If Corsola is kept Water Rock, that then runs into the fossil territory of Kabuto and Ammonite. Consider changing Kabuto's line to Bug Rock if that's the case, if only to play into the fan theories of it being related to Scyther and Genesect. We're not quite done with waters yet. Pure Water Octillery can be Water Fire, which is convenient given its color palette. It also, surprisingly, 
Finley is able to learn Sunny Day, Fire Blast, and Flamethrower by TM in Gen 3. Oh, and Quillfish as Poison Steel as previously mentioned. I'm hesitant to add any more since we still have so many water types. But if you want suggestions regardless, here are my forced replies. Add Shuckle. Since it internally produces drinkable beverages and is found by the sea, Bug Water is still a decent defensive type. Deli Bird as Ice Water can also make sense, since that was his type in the beta, and also it's Paradox's type. Note that doing so undoes some of our previous anti-redundancy work. Finally, um, oh look, numerous water type cards and the title of Sea Guardian. Lugia can be water whatever, who knows. If you want to get rid of Gyarados's flying type, give it to Lugia. Water flying. Speaking of flying... The Flying Type! Flying is indeed one of the most populous, but one we've already done a number on through normal type changes. We've completely changed most normal flyings, with the only ones left being Pidgeot and Jodrio. Bug flying faces similar challenges, Butterfree has been changed to Bug Fairy, while Letty and Slime can fit either Bug Fighting for reasons we've previously mentioned, Bug Normal, which we haven't mentioned but is based on his predominantly normal type moves like Comet Punch and Swift, or, as a new suggestion, Bug Psychic. As many of his entries mention cosmic energies in the form of stars in the night sky, very similar to these other psychics. Also, it resembles an alien, several of which we know already fall into the psychic type. Also has a third eye dot where many psychics have head gems. Also barrier moves. Also, Orbeetle, which basically took this concept and ran with it. All it needs is better stats and a psychic punching move. The Poison Type! Poison 2 has a very healthy population. Very healthy, with fewer redundancies now that we dealt with Bug Poison, Grass Poison, and a few Mono Poisons. Ariados and Victory Bell have been moved to other types. Arbok gains Poison Dark. Muck as either Poison Dark or Poison Fighting based on your needs. Coolfish as potentially Poison Steel. Since there are so many of this type already here, I'd avoid adding a large amount. Unless it's for variety's sake. My only suggestions were Lickitung as normal poison, Magmar as maybe fire poison if not fire fighting, due to its use of smog. Hypno as psychic poison if not psychic fighting as previously mentioned. For circumstantial evidence, it has poison gas as a move, and was in fact used in Koga's gym by a few underlings. Venomoth can also be changed because of gyms. A bug psychic instead of bug poison. It's a prominent Pokemon of Sabrina in both the video game and trading card game, while TCG Koga doesn't even have one. It has strong psychic type moves by level up as well. Bug is our next type, so we can pick up the discussion there. The Bug Type! As you can see, bug flying and bug poison are the major redundancies here, which we've already remedied. The only new suggestions are Pinsir as bug ground, since Earthquake is a staple coverage move in 3rd gen onwards. Again, Kabuto and Kabutops are only here if you change Chuckle to Bug Water. Lastly, Pineco as Bug Grass, if Parasect gets changed to Bug Ghost. We see Pineco again in the next type. The Grass Type Grass Poison is the only major redundancy, so we can lay them to rest. Another chain reaction we mentioned previously was the Executor's Line and Celebi ditching Grass Psyche in favor of Grass Ghost and Grass Fairy, respectively. Either Meganium or Bellossum can inherit Grass Psychic. What we haven't mentioned is Sunflora, which should be changed to Grass Fire. It was a real mistake to leave it as pure grass. Leave that to Tangela's Line. With Sunny Day, Chlorophyll, Solar Beam, and Flamethrower, Grass Fire Sunflora could have had it all, and then some. As for brand new Grass types, uh, <laughs> I'm not exactly sure if any are truly justifiable. Grass type has very little ambiguity. If it has a leaf or a flower, chances are it was already grass to begin with. The only one I could see was Pine Co as Grass Bug, since Pine Cones are indeed seeds from coniferous trees. Pseudo Wood as Grass Rock? Its core concept would be lost if it goes from Pseudo Wood to Actual Wood, but hey, Lyleap was able to do this, and it too was supposed to be fossilized plant life. Here's a surprise. Farfetch carries a literal vegetable around it as a sword, so you can either go grass flying or even grass fighting, though I much prefer it as fighting flying due to fighting type's smaller population. Politoed is here again because, uh, it's, it's green? Ignore this. Corsola is only here if you used up its other potential combinations for other mods. Sorry, not much else to go on here. The Psychic Type Psychic is rather comfortable in number, 
but it wouldn't hurt to grant the sea of mono psychic some secondary types. Mr. Mime has of course been retconned to Psychic Fairy, with perhaps Mew joining it if you see fit. We ourselves have already updated the rest. Alakazamas may be Psychic Steel, again because of the spoons, Hypno Psychic Poison or Psychic Fighting, Wobbuffet and Unknown no longer being Psychic, and Giraffery being Psychic Dark. On to new Psychics. We discussed the previous psychic potential for either Venonat or Lediba, and either Bellossom or Meganium. I'd save that secondary starter, Psychic type, for Typhlosion, however. Since I handed off Fire Ghost to Ninetales, and added secondary types to Feraligator and Meganium, I felt Typhlosion could use a little something something as well. In Storm Silver, mine was able to use extra sensory as coverage, a move which it also gets in modern games with Breeding, as well as Zen Headbutt by TM. The Delta species is also an influence. There's another fire combo that could also work, so let's put Typhlosion on the back burner for now. A very off the cuff choice would be Ho-Oh as Fire Psychic. This would only be in the event that you removed the secondary flying type from Lugia and made it Psychic Dragon. Psychic, Psychic, Heart, and Soul. After all, it learns many higher damaging Psychic moves like Extra Sensory, Psychic, Future Sight, Zen Headbutt, and even Dream Eater. It also gets Calm Mind. To further the case, rainbows have been associated with Psychic type, as seen with these mons, and being in tune with emotions and period of heart is also a Psychic trait. Not as far off as you thought, huh? I'm surprised myself. Golduck is here if you made room by taking away Starmie's Water Psychic type in favor of Water Fairy. And as we mentioned before, Dantler is Normal Psychic, with Giraffe Rig having moved to Psychic Dark. The Fire Type! Water fires are plentiful. Too plentiful. A problem we wished we had in Gen 4. Not even Rotom He could save us. Among these, we've modified many, leaving only Flareon, Arcanine, and Entei as the remaining purifiers in their final forms. I'm okay with that. Aside from adding Octillery and Sunflower to the Fire Nation, we can also skim over the other ones we've already covered. The main one here to consider is Typhlosion and Quillava. Aside from Fire's Psychic, Fire Ground was suited as well. Being volcanic eruption Pokemon in nature, not unlike Camera Up that succeeds it. Only a few types remain. The Electric Type! Pure Electric is the dominant electric composition. We've already upgraded Electrode, Ampharos, and Electabuzz with secondary types. Raichu, Jolteon, and Raikou maintain the original recipe. The sole additions would be normal Electric Porygon and Porygon 2, and if you want, Porygon Z. Electrical shortage is more of a Gen 3 problem than it is a Gen 2. Let's wrap it up here and continue with the final two types. The Ground Type! For ground, we see a bit of mono-grounded redundancy, but even that pales in comparison to the rehash of rock ground. We pretty much took care of this in one fell swoop during the Dragon Type reform, potentially making Onyx's line Rock Dragon and Steel Dragon, if not Aerodactyl. Or, we made Rhydon, Ground Dragon, Aerodactyl Rock Dragon, while Onyx and Steelix have pure non-ground types. Tantru's line, Marowak, and Diglett's line became dual types. Any other new ground additions we've already discussed. That leaves us with only Donphan's line remaining pure ground, and Geodude's line maintaining rock ground. What happened to rock ground type Larvitar and Pupitar? I think it's fitting to make them pure rock, if only to have an easier transition into rock dark later as Tyranitar. I'm hesitant to make them rock dark themselves, since we already boosted dark's population by a huge number. That's it, only one type remained. The Rock Type! With Rock Ground and Rock Water repeats handled, there actually isn't anything new to discuss regarding this type. Let's just look upon the finished stone sculpture and appreciate all the potential changes we made along the way. That's it for now. Since I've worked so closely with Gen 2 sprites in the making of this video, and in general, my next video will actually be the ugliest Gen 2 sprites in my opinion. Till we meet again, farewell. Be sure to check the main channel for more Pokemon and Fakemon related content. For spreading updates, find Substitute on Twitter.